In this next set of videos, I'd like to tell you about a problem called anomaly detection. This is a reasonably commonly used type of machine learning, and one of its interesting aspects is that it's mainly thought of as an unsupervised learning problem, but there are some aspects of it that are also very similar to sort of a supervised learning problem. So what is anomaly detection? To explain it, let me use the motivating example of Imagine that you're a manufacturer of aircraft engines, and let's say that as your aircraft engines roll off the assembly line, you're doing you know, QA, quality assurance testing, and as that part of that testing, you measure uh, features of your aircraft engine, like maybe you measure the heat generated, things like the vibrations, and so on. Um, I actually have some friends that worked on this problem a long time ago, and these were actually the sorts of features that they were collecting off uh, actual aircraft engines. And so you now have a data set of uh, X1 through XM, if you have manufactured M aircraft engines. And if you plot your data, maybe it looks like this. So each uh, point here, each cross here is one of your unlabeled examples. So the anomaly detection problem is the following. Let's say that on you know the next day, you have a new aircraft engine that rolls off the assembly line, and your new aircraft engine has some set of features X test. What the anomaly detection problem is, we want to know if this aircraft engine is anomalous in any way. In other words, we want to know if maybe this engine should uh, undergo further testing because, you know, or, or if it looks like an okay engine and so it's okay to just ship it to a customer without further testing. So if your new aircraft engine looks like a point over there, well, you know, that looks a lot like the aircraft engines we've seen before and so maybe we'll say that it looks okay. Whereas if your new aircraft engine, if X test, you know, were, were, were a point that were out here, so if, if uh, X1 and X2 of the features of this new example, X test were all the way out there, then we would call that an anomaly and maybe send that aircraft engine for further testing before we ship it to a customer. Since it looks nothing like, since it looks very different than the rest of the aircraft engines we've seen before. More formally, in the anomaly detection problem, we're given some data sets, x1 through xm of examples, and we usually assume that these n examples are normal or non-anomalous non examples, and we want an algorithm to tell us if some new example, x test, is anomalous. The approach that we're going to take is that given this training set, given the unlabeled training set, we're going to build a model for p of x. Uh, in other words, we're going to build a model for the probability of x, where x are these features of, say, aircraft engines. And so having built a model of the probability of x, we're then going to say that if for the new aircraft engine, if p of x test is less than some epsilon, then we flag this as an anomaly. So we see a new engine that you know, has very low probability under our model P of X that we estimate from the data. Then we flag this anomaly, whereas if P of X test is, say, greater than or equal to some small threshold, then we say that, yeah, okay, it looks okay. And so given a training set like that plotted here, if you build a model, hopefully we'll find that aircraft engines, hopefully the model P of X will say that points that lie, you know, somewhere in the middle, that's pretty high probability, whereas points that are a little bit further out have lower probability, points that are even further out have somewhat lower probability, and a point that's way out here, the points that a point that's way out there would be an anomaly. Whereas for a point that's way in there, right in the middle, this would be okay, because P of X right in the middle of that would be very high, because we've seen a lot of points in that region. Here are some examples of applications of anomaly detection. Perhaps the most common application of anomaly detection is actually fraud detection. If you have many users, and if each of your users take different activities, you know, maybe on your website or in a physical plant or something, you can compute features, xi, of uh, the different users' activities. And what you can do is build a model to say, you know, what is the probability of different users behaving different ways? So what is the probability of a particular vector of features of um, a user's behavior. So, you know, examples of features of a user's activity maybe uh, on the website would be things like maybe x1 is um, 
how often does this user log in? You know, x2 maybe the number of web pages visited or, or the number of transactions. Maybe x3 is you know the number of posts of the users on the forum. A feature x4 could be what is the typing speed of the user, and, and some websites can actually track that. So what's the typing speed of this user in characters per second? And so you can model p of x based on this sort of data. And finally, having modeled p of x, you can try to identify users that are behaving very strangely on your website by checking which ones have probability of x less than epsilon, and maybe uh, send the profiles of those users for further review, or uh, demand additional identification from those users, or some such to uh, guard against you know, beha strange behavior or fraudulent behavior on your website. This sort of technique will t tend to flag users that are behaving unusually, not just the behavior, not just users that may be behaving fraudulently. So sort of not just uh, accounts that may have been stolen or users that are trying to do funny things, or so we'll just find unusual users. But this is actually the technique that is used by many online sort of websites that sell things to try to identify uh, users behaving strangely, and that what that might be indicative of either fraudulent behavior or of computers uh, accounts that have been stolen. Another example of uh, anomaly detection is manufacturing. So already talked about the aircraft engine thing, where we can find unusual, say, aircraft engines and send those for further review. A third application would be uh, monitoring computers in a data center. And I actually have some friends that work on this too. So if you have a lot of machines in a computer cluster or in a data center, you can do things like compute features of each machine. So maybe uh, some features capturing you know, how much memory you use, number of disk accesses, CPU load, uh, as well as more complex features like what is the CPU load on this machine divided by the amount of network traffic on this machine. Then given a data set of how your computers and your data center usually behave, you can model the probability of x, you can model the probability of these machines having different, different amounts of memory use, or probably of these machines having different numbers of disk accesses or different CPU loads and so on. And if you ever have a machine whose uh, probability of x, p of x is very small, then you know that machine is behaving unusually and uh, maybe that machine is about to go down or, and uh, you can flag that for review by a system administrator. And this is actually being used today uh, by various data centers to watch out for unusual things happening on their machines. So that's anomaly detection. In the next video, I'll talk a bit about the Gaussian distribution and review properties of the Gaussian probability distribution. And in videos after that, we'll apply it to develop an anomaly detection algorithm.